So Malik Willis had his first NFL action yesterday as the Tennessee Titans took on the Baltimore Ravens. And I just want to give my thoughts as a Titans fan on his first game. So let's get right into it. First and foremost, it was kind of a shock that Mike Vrabel announced that he was going to be the starter. But during the Titans telecast, they were saying that Vrabel wanted to see Willis play. He wanted to see him play right away. So I think it's good that he got the start. I kind of just wish that he had more starters in front of him, especially with how bad the offensive line played yesterday. But it is what it is. First play of the game was a rollout to the right, and Willis threw a pass to Tory Carter. Carter dropped it. Now, I put it mainly on Carter because that was a catchable pass, but at the same time, it just seemed like Willis got rid of the ball a little too late. But it was his first NFL pass, so I don't think anybody can really hold it against him. Julius Chestnut runs for about five yards on second down, and then on third and five, Willis tries to force it into coverage and nearly gives up a pick six, but luckily the defender dropped it. And he was trying to get to Kyle Phillips, but those are the type of passes that he absolutely cannot make if he wants to play in this league. Luckily, there's not a whole lot of pressure on him to play right away, but that was not a very good first drive for Malik Willis. And he didn't even really get an opportunity on the second drive because Julius Chestnut fumbles the football and the Ravens recovered it on their way to getting the first touchdown of the game. So we're down seven, nothing. So drive number three on first and 10, it's a design pass play, but Willis isn't able to find anybody and he just decides to run, get what he can. But I don't like that he tries to fight for yardage. I mean, sure, I know he's a football player, but he is a quarterback. So get out of bounds or slide, man. You're gonna get yourself hurt and we need you on the field or we're going to need you on the field at some point because let's be honest, unless Tannehill gets us a Super Bowl this year, he might be gone next year, so Willis might be the starter, possibly. Third and five, he kind of scrambles around, and then he throws it, and it was incomplete. So, first three drives, and he has three incompletions, one almost a pick six. But yeah, it's not looking good for him through the first three drives. The defense forces another punt, so now fourth drive of the game. And it starts off with a little screen to Chestnut, who gets a little bit of redemption from the fumble on the second drive. And it's like an 11 yard gain as a first down. After a big run by Chestnut to really redeem himself from the fumble, second and eight from the 25 yard line of Baltimore, and Willis dumps it off to Hassan Haskins, which I think is a good decision. If you have nobody open down the field, just dump it off to your running back, and Haskins was able to get the first down. So that ends the first quarter. We get into the second quarter, and here's where the magic happens. So it's a rollout to the right initially, but the offense sells on Willis completely. So he rolls to the left inside, finds some space, jukes out two defenders at once, and gets into the end zone for the touchdown. That's like the big highlight that everybody's seen from him so far. But hey, we haven't really had athleticism at quarterback like that since... Marcus Mariota. I mean, Mariota obviously didn't end up panning out well for us, but I mean, I just see some Michael Vick. I see some Steve McNair. I see some Lamar Jackson in there as far as the, his athleticism goes. And he just, he knows when to tuck it and run. Like if he doesn't have anybody open downfield, he's holding the ball too long. He just gets into tuck it and run mode. And that was a hell of a run for the touchdown as well. Very impressive speed. And we tie the game up at seven. So now we get the ball back with about 12.15 to go. We're at our own 24, I want to say. Willis goes off the play action, looks deep, and he finds Racy McMath, who that, I believe that was his only catch of the game, but that just shows that McMath has the potential to be a deep threat for us, which is something I feel like is missing from Tennessee's receiving core, because that was A.J. Brown. But with him gone now, somebody else has to step up as a deep threat, either Burks or McMath. Maybe Bobby Trees can do it as well, but he's not really that guy. It's just the Rams run a really vertical offense, so anytime he did that, and then I don't even think he really did that like that, but I could be wrong. Rams fans, correct me if I'm wrong. So now second and four from the Baltimore 23, I believe if it is. And it's play action. Once again, Willis has guys in his face. So he hits a little sidearm pass and hits Tommy Hudson for the first down. Now, admittedly, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed when it comes to quarterback play, but I would say that's pretty damn impressive for a rookie to do that. But I could be wrong. 
Still a hell of a throw though. So we're in the red zone now, and then on second and eight, after a two yard gain on a run, I put this more on Christian Deloro than anybody else, but Willis just showed his lack of pocket awareness and he got caught from behind and sacked. And why that's so worrisome is those type of plays when you're not paying attention to the pocket and then you have a defender just hit you out of nowhere, that could very easily turn into a fumble. Now, I don't expect Christian Deloro to get a lot of playing time. I don't even really expect him to make the team because he, in particular, had a pretty bad game. But, you know, even if Lawan has a bad rep, Willis has to keep his head on a swivel. Otherwise, it's going to get taken clean off. So, third and 14, it's an empty shotgun set. And Willis can't find anybody down the field. And he just decides to run for it. I mean... Smart decision. I wish he would have got out of bounds or slid a little sooner. Again, that's my big complaint about him running the football. He just seems like he does not want to slide, and that is going to get him hurt. Now, we've had enough injury issues with quarterbacks over the past decade with both Jake Locker and Marcus Mariota, and even Vince Young as well. So hopefully he learns how to slide and protects himself a little better than he did in this game moving forward. So very next drive, we lose three yards on first down. So now we got a second and 13. And Willis scrambles away once again. And again, he needs to slide. He picked up about six on the play. Let's slide. Next play after that is a third and seven with about four minutes to go in the half. Willis has to scramble around once again. Big surprise. I mean, that second team O line wasn't playing very well. But he threw a nice ball. It was a little high, but Chigga Conquo could have gone up for it and got it. But he kind of alligator bodied that one, to be completely honest. Still could have been a better ball from Willis, though, so I'm not excusing him. But Chig got to go up there and get it. But I understand. He made a business decision. He saw, he saw Tony Jefferson there. He's like, no, sir. I know Tony Jefferson hasn't played in a few years. Well, he played last year, but he didn't really play a whole lot last year. But he missed 2020 because of COVID, but he is still a dog as a safety. So I get it, Chig. So the Ravens score a touchdown and Tennessee has about 34 seconds to go. They decide to let Willis let it fly. And he throws a nice little pass there to Mason Kinsey, who gets up to about the 45 yard line. Good ball there from Willis. And first and 10, he rolls out to his right. And he tries to avoid the defenders, but takes a sack. You got to throw it away in that situation. That's another hit that I got to get him. Like, he's trying too hard to make a play. And I understand it's just preseason. And hopefully he won't do that in the regular season. But you got to just throw the ball away. We had no timeouts. I think we had, like, maybe one or two timeouts, actually. But either way, we don't have a lot of time. Just throw the ball away. Save a timeout. And if we didn't have any timeouts, that would be even worse. But... Again, I know it's his first NFL action, and he'll learn from this game and get better, but damn, there were just a few situations where I'm just like, come on, Willis. So it's second and 17 with about 20-something seconds to go. We're at about the 38, and no timeouts now. And then Willis just dumps it off, and luckily, I believe that was Jordan Wilkins who got the ball, and he, he gets out of bounds. So now 16 seconds to go, third and 12, and Willis out of the shotgun. They're only rushing three, and he nearly gets sacked. I mean, yes, the O-line that was playing was pretty putrid for most of the first half, even though I think Nicholas Petty Frere played pretty well, but everybody else on the O-line wasn't great. But Willis has to have better pocket presence. You can't run where the D-line is at. But he did that, nearly got sacked, but ended up just throwing it away. And that ended up leading to halftime. Then he has one play in the third quarter. It's a second and four. And I believe it was Traylon Burks who was wide open. And he completely missed him. Willis decides to go scramble. I don't remember if he got the first down. I'm going to look it up real quick. Uh, he did scramble around a little bit. It was some Vince Young-esque stuff. But he did end up picking up the first down, but Vrabel wanted him to throw it deep, so he ended up getting pulled. But, you know, that ended up being the end of him being in that game. And Logan Woodside actually threw two interceptions in this game. He threw an interception shortly after that play, as a matter of fact. So, Woodside might lose the QB2 spot to Willis. I mean, I think that was kind of expected anyways, but... 
He was number two on the depth chart beforehand, but you know they decided to start Willis because obviously they weren't going to start Tannehill in this game. But they started Willis. And I would say if I had to grade his performance, I'm going to give it a B minus. There was a lot of good in his play, but there was a lot that he needs to work on as well. Like, I really liked the throw to McNath. I mean, that was a big dot. And I like that he was able to elude pressure most of the time, at least, and end up picking up some solid yardage, making the field goal easier, and even getting a touchdown when the O-line just wasn't blocking well on a rollout but then he had the bad he almost threw a pick six on his first drive he had a few missed opportunities he missed chicken conquo a little bit i still put it a little bit on the conquo because he probably should have gone up for it but at the same time i get why he didn't go up for it and wilson has to put it on the money a little bit better than that and then you know a few of the times where his pocket awareness was just completely oblivious as well overall I think a B- is fair. If you wanted to give him a C+, plus, that's fair as well. Uh, I honestly think he played a little bit better than I expected him to. Now, I didn't watch Liberty a whole lot last year or the year before, so I had only really heard Willis. And I heard, saw all his highlights. I didn't really see any of his lowlights. So, it was good to see the good and the bad in him. Obviously, there's no pressure on him to start this year because, knock on wood, Unless Tannehill gets hurt or just completely royally is just awful and we're like one in five to start the season, I don't really expect Willis to play a ton. I think maybe we'll have some packages for him where he does some read option with Henry or something like that, but I don't really expect him to get like a ton of PT at the quarterback position. But for what his game was, I think he's definitely a QB too. Um, I don't know if I'd say he can compete with Tannehill for the job quite yet, but he is definitely QB2, especially with how bad Woodside played. But those are my thoughts on Malik Willis's game yesterday. What did you think of Willis's performance? Who else stood out to you in that game? There were a few guys who had some good performances, but I wanted to focus this video on Malik Willis. But let me know in the comment section who you think performed well, who you think performed poorly in the game on either team whether it's the titans or the ravens if you're a ravens fan let me know who you liked on the baltimore side and make sure you guys hit that like button hit the sub button if you're new i mainly focus on franchise content in the madden games and madden 23 of course if you guys didn't see i made my announcement for who my franchise team is going to be so check out that video and subscribe if you want to see more franchise content as well and also check out my Twitch. It's uh, twitch.tv slash kazcray. I'm also going to be doing a franchise over there as well. So keep an eye out for that. And we're going to keep it rolling here on Kazcray Gaming. If you want to see more from the channel, check out the playlist and the video in front of you.